Are y'all ready for me? Let me ask you this. Did we just kind of part to see here? Is this like the Democrats and the Republicans? <laughs> or maybe the Marshall WVU and you guys are just the independents? <laughs> you know, but uh, let me tell you on that subject real quick. I would, I would advise you all, you know, I've got a lot of white hair. I've been around a long time. I started with my grandparents not having indoor plumbing. I am the American dream. And I started with nothing, you know, my family with nothing. And we worked really hard. We did a lot of stuff. Now, the wisdom that I could pass on to you today would be twofold. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deviate from the script a lot here and, and just tell you just this. Is first and foremost, if you are anchored to a party, whether it be as an independent or a Republican or as a Democrat, over the fact that you first and foremost are West Virginians, I would think really hard about that because I think with all in me, we need to first and foremost be West Virginians. You see, I don't really care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or independent in any way. I never have. You know, I took this office for one purpose, and that was to help. You see, at the end of the day, there's nothing that this office can really do for me. I don't need the money, I don't need this, you know, the hot tips, I don't need the, the status or the ego or anything like that. I'm here for the right reason, whether you buy it or don't buy it. And I want goodness for you, and I want goodness for the people of the state, and I want goodness for the legacy of the state from the standpoint that what you want is your children to be able to have opportunity and success and live here and not take off to Charlotte and Atlanta and Denver to be able to get a job. So that's what I work for, you know, and, and I hope and I pray that, and I know that many of you, the vast, vast, vast majority of you do the same thing. Now, let me just say this. Today, we're able to pass out dollars, are we not? And there's a lot, a lot of people here that are recipients of that. And there's a lot of people here that do incredible, incredible work. And a lot of days, it's thankless work. But today, at least for me, it's not going to be thankless. Today, we're going to, and I'm going to have to read these because they gave them to me just like, 12 minutes ago, and they're too blooming complicated to remember. Victims of Crime Act, Justice Assistance Grant, Civil Legal Services Grant, or Service Grant, and National Sexual Assault Kit Initiative. Now, there's many, many, many houses under these headings. And there's many, many people. Throwing that to you, Pam. How about that, Tulsa? There's many, many, many departments and variations and organizations and people and so many, many different things that are happening right amongst you. You know what it's all about. And today, the bottom line is, we as a state and as a nation through our state want to do more, don't we? We want to do more. We want to do more for you that are here, and we want to do more for those that aren't here. I mean, that's just as simple as that. The reality is, we haven't been able to do more because all of us know the state of the being. The state of the being is we're upside down. We can't 
We can't fund more because we're upside down and we're trying like crazy to some way figure out how in the world to keep the power on and keep the, keep the lights on and wherever we want to do. Now, the one thing I would tell you is just this. We're getting better. We have a terrific problem within this state as far as drugs and, and what are we going to do? And we're getting, we're going, let me just say this. You can't fix that situation with a Band-Aid and an aspirin. It is a humongous problem and we need real money. We need real money to be able to address all the different aspects, whether they be social issues with social workers or law enforcement issues or stricter laws or additional law enforcement people, or they be treatment facilities or whatever they may be. But you know what they all start with? It all starts with one word, and that's hope, a job. Hope, hope. Because we all know when we have despair, we turn to all kinds of issues that aren't very good. Now, let me just say something that is a really positive thing and is something that I'm really, really proud of. This state is changing. It's changing right now. There's smiles on people's faces. In the coal fields, there's actually, there's actually a rejuvenation of our communities that is starting. Now, is it done or well on its way? No. But it's starting, and there's smiles. Throughout all of our state, with the passing of the road bond referendum, there's going to be lots of smiles. Lots and lots and lots of revenue is going to come to us. And then we can turn around and spend additional revenues right back to you. Absolutely, and the great work you're doing, we're on our way. This state, our educational systems, all the very things that you want for your families in every way, this state's on the move. And it hasn't been on the move forevermore. And I would love to say, oh, yes, and because that, the reason of all this is me. Well, of course it's not. That's preposterous. But you had to have a leader. You had to have somebody that was willing to shake the tree. Now, a lot of people within the legislature didn't like me shaking the tree. And I shook the tree pretty daggum hard. But at the end of the day, the people were with me. And the people have, have voiced their opinions. And we're seeing movement and real change in the legislature. And you're seeing a better atmosphere of cooperation through me and them. You see, I'm always the guy that wants to be positive and all of us run across the finish line together. I'm not the guy that needs credit. It goes back to just why I'm here. I'm not here for a bunch of credit, but I am somebody that wants to get something done. You see, I don't really want to just sit here and take a lot of credit for the goodness that maybe we're able to do with you guys today or, or ride in a parade and have somebody pat me on the back. I want to get something done, and we're on our way. And we're on our way in many ways because of you. You see, you're here today. Now, you know, I know you're here because you're, you're winners of grants and you're going to have real monies and and not enough monies to do what you want to do, but surely substantially more than zero. I know that. But I also know you're here because you care. And that's why I'm here. And you're good people. And I'm really proud of you. And so I won't bore you anymore. I'll just tell you just as simple as this. I love you, and I mean that. And I'll tell you, God bless you, because we are blessed in so many ways, it's unbelievable. Just 20 minutes ago, I'm coming down the turnpike, and a, a call came from my daughter. 
and she's pregnant with our first grandchild. And she said, she just went to her appointment. She's going to an OBGYN here in, in Charleston. And she said, you know, they just, they just measured the baby to be. She doesn't know, and she doesn't want to know whether it's a boy or girl. I don't want to know either. All I pray is, and I'd like for your prayers too, that it'll be, the baby will be healthy and Jill will be able to get through everything great. But at the same time, she said they just measured the baby and the baby is six pounds, five ounces now. And she's not supposed to have the baby until December the 4th. And she said, Dad, the baby's going to be huge. <laughs> and then they measured its femur and told Jill the baby's going to be really, really tall. And then, you know, wonder where that's coming from. And the problem that I'm worried about is the huge part, not the tall part. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, we are blessed. We are really blessed people. Listen, I can never, ever thank you enough. I see a lot of law enforcement here. I want to I wanna end with just saying one thing that will make you laugh just a little bit. My first day on this job, is Jan still here? I shouldn't tell this, <laughs> but, but I got to tell it because I've, I've already started. But my first day on the job, you know, I, the, after I'm inaugurated, the next, the next day I have a game that I'm coaching in Princeton, a girls game. Green Bar East playing Princeton. And so I go to the game, and when I get to the game, of course, the state police are there, and I'm not used to all this police coverage at all, and I coached the game, and some way, somehow, we won the game, of which I was really concerned that I didn't want to lose my first game after I'd become governor, and so, so we win the game, not by many points. We come outside, and there's a patrolman there, a trooper, and he said, I'll follow, I'll be right behind you, governor, and I'll follow you all the way to Lewisburg. And I said, good enough and everything. And we got in the car and up the road we go. I mean, I got in my, my Suburban. And, and, you know, with all the inauguration stuff, I always drive all the time. And, uh, but that day, my, the buddy with me and my wife, Kathy, were with me. And so I said, Mo, you drive because Kathy and I had been through all the inauguration stuff and we were pretty tired. And so I'm sitting there and we get to the first toll booth right there, you know, at Gent, and all of a sudden the trooper just zooms around us, and right through the toll booth he goes. And I said, well, follow him, Mo. You know, of course, we don't have an easy pass or anything, and zoom, right through we go. Well, about three weeks later, I get a bill for $92 <laughs> for going through the toll booth like that. True, now, so this is all true. And then all of a sudden, we're making hay going up the road, and I'm loving it because we're right up with uh, the trooper, troopers right in front of us, and we're booking it. I mean, we are really zooming up the road. Now, Jan, please forgive me, but at the same time, I'm looking over how fast we're going. I'm thinking, well, we're going to get home really fast and because we're zooming, and I mean zooming. And so all of a sudden, I remember Moe's vehicle is at Harper Road, and we're going to turn toward Lewisburg, on I-64, and so I call in to the captain to tell him to see if he could radio the trooper to tell the trooper we've got to go on to Harper Road to drop Mo off. And so now I look over, and, and we as we slowly pass 90 miles an hour, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to go past Lewisburg if they don't call back real quick. And all of a sudden, they called back, and here's the exact words. Governor, the trooper that is in front of you is not with you. <laughs> and the trooper that is behind you can't keep up with your ass. <laughs> so nevertheless, it's been quite an ordeal. I congratulate you beyond belief, and I thank you for one thing and one thing more than anything, you care. God bless you. Love you. Thank you.